well, uh, we have another question here. Uh, that's question three. Uh, excuse me. The question is this, says that uh, a, conver a convergent geometric series uh, cons um, consisting of only positive terms has the first term A, consists ratio. Well, we have another question here. Question three says that um, a convergent uh, geometric series consisting all of uh, only positive terms has first term A, constant ratio R, and nth term T N, uh, such that the sum, excuse me, of uh, T N N starting from um, five to infinite is equal to a quarter. Now. Uh, let me first write the question here. Uh, three points. Uh, okay, question three. So we have like uh, the sum of uh, some stats from. Okay. Question three. Oops. So we have like a sum of uh, Tn equal to a quarter, but now the sum starts from uh, five to infinite because this is a convergent geometry series. And then um, now question 3.1 says what? If T1 plus T2 equal to two, write down uh, an expression for A in terms of R. Okay. Uh, um, what do we know about uh, a geometric sequence that converges? Because here, uh, it is important to note that uh, it is said here, a, ge a, a convergent geometric series, okay? It has a special formula. Uh, here, we don't say Sn equal to A, open square brackets, and then Rn, no, we don't do that. We will use uh, Sn equal to A over one minus R. That's the formula, the proper formula for, uh, convergent geometric series. And then R obviously is the constant difference. R will be uh, the constant ratio, I meant Tn over Tn minus one. Now, um, in this situation, um, if I need to find uh, an expression for T1 plus T2, okay, um, I will say, okay, over here is not even Sn, but S infinite as infinite, that is sum to the infinite. So we know uh, R is that, and then A is the first term, A is T1, okay? Now, meaning meaning that uh, uh, we have like, so 3.1 says like if T1 plus T2 equal to two, okay? T1 will be uh, the first term, okay, A plus T2 will be the second term, you know, the second term will be uh, AR. Why am I saying that? Because the terms are going to be the same. The terms Tn will be equal to AR to the N minus one. So if I want to work out T2, T2 there, it means that I will substitute the value of two wherever I have N. So the AR to the power of uh, two minus one. So I sub two over here and then, uh, T2 will be A to the AR to the power of one, or just AR. So we have like AR equal to two, okay? So in this situation, we can just, uh, you notice with me that we have a constant, uh, a common factor here. And then we can take A as a common factor. It's gonna be like that. And then, uh, and then equal to two. So if I take A as a common factor, left with one here plus R, okay? And then, uh, uh, we can just divide then both sides by one plus R in order to get uh, A, okay? One plus R, and then uh, these two will obviously simplified, and then we get A in terms of R. We have like A will be equal to uh, two over one plus R. So that's the value of A in terms of R, okay? Then, um, uh, the following question, that was question 3.1. And now question 3.2, uh, the question says let's calculate the value of A and R. Now, the actual values, okay. 
Uh, uh, I'm going to move my board over here. And then question 3.2. So we, we are going now to calculate uh, the value of A and the value of R. That's what the question says. How can we do that then? Okay. We also, it is also given that um, the sum to the infinite is equal to a quarter because when they said uh, the sum to the infinite uh, Tn is equal to a quarter. Oh no, but, but a quarter, a quarter. But over here, n, the sets n from five to infinite. So, but, um, now, how can we do that uh, in this situation? Uh, no, not exactly. It wasn't from 30. No, it's three, not five. It's three, starting from three to infinite. Okay. Um, over here. That's from three to the infinite. Then, um, so what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Okay. Uh, <coughs> um, okay, so this is not just S and gets. This is just the sum. And now, so therefore, I will say, uh, therefore, S and S infinite then will be equal to T1 plus T2, okay, plus, uh, the sum of these terms starting from three, because starting from three is uh, the third term, term three, all the way through the infinite. And then um, uh, S infinite, we said uh, it is given that S infinite was equal to, uh, okay, not S, S infinite, but all this was just equal to a quarter. Okay, this was just a quarter, one over four. And then um, uh, T1 plus T2, this also is given to be just equal to two. So we can just substitute the values. Uh, uh, this would be equal to two plus a quarter. And then uh, S infinite itself also, this is, uh, but according to the formula that we wrote earlier, this is just uh, A over uh, one minus uh, R. So this would make A over one minus R equal to two plus a quarter is um, nine over four. We can check in the calculator. Uh, two plus a quarter, uh, that makes nine over four, nine over four. Okay, my nine look like almost like a, so nine over four. Then, uh, and then previously we also express A in terms of R. So we can substitute the value of A, which is two, two um, over one minus R. So we can just sum in the value of A. It's, it is two over one minus R. No, one plus R all over. Okay, that's the main fraction line now. One minus R equal to, uh, nine over four. Now it is important to note that when we see a fraction like that, it means it also has a denominator. This part, the denominator has also a denominator, okay? It's also a fraction. So now we have like a fraction over another fraction. So uh, I prefer to just split my board this way. Um, even before I move there, we can just say this implies that we can write it like two over, no, I won't have enough space. Uh, just gonna move this way. Uh, so we'll have like uh, two over one plus R all over uh, uh, one minus R over one equal to nine over four. You know, this will make, um, 
I already wrote it down. So I can apply the properties of uh, fractions. You know, when you have a fraction over that fraction, okay, we are allowed to multiply the first fraction by the inverse of the other fraction. So it's like two over one plus R times one minus one over uh, one minus R equal to uh, nine over four. Now, uh, you know, when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerator, you multiply also the denominator. This is like, we do one plus R, okay, times one minus R, two times one equal to nine over four. Then uh, two times one is just two, okay? And then one plus R times one minus R, remember, this is like what we learned earlier uh, in the previous year. Uh, the things we were calling the difference between the squares, okay? One plus R times one minus R. This is just equal to one squared minus uh, R squared. Okay, and then this is equal to nine over four. Then uh, this is like two over one minus R squared equal to uh, nine over four. Now uh, we can solve this by um, uh, applying uh, the, uh, what you call uh, um, uh, the cross multiplication technique to solve the equation. So we'll do one minus r times nine, and then two times uh, four. So we have like nine open bracket one minus r squared equal to two times four, which is okay two times four, and then this will make uh, nine minus nine r squared. Uh, I prefer to keep it like that. Um, if I need to find, I will divide us by nine and divide by nine there. And then this will make a uh, one minus R squared equal to eight over nine. Now I can move the one over. Okay, just move this also over. Um, and then this will make a, uh, negative r squared will be equal to eight over nine minus one and then uh you know uh negative eight minus nine one is like one is the same thing as nine over nine okay if it's right like that and then we have like negative r squared equal to uh, negative one over nine now that we have negative on the left hand side negative on the right hand side in terms of a single you can just cross the negative like that and then we have like r squared will be equal to one over nine. Now, if it is so, to find r, then what we do in this situation, we're going to square root on both sides. Square root because uh, the power of the square root will cancel the power of two, and then uh, that will make r to be equal to um, <coughs> plus minus always. You know, when you square root an equation, you put plus minus. Um, square root of one over three. Okay. Uh, sometimes it can be written as uh, uh, plus minus one over square root of three. And then if someone wanna rationalize this, this can also can be written as uh, square root of three over three. It's the same thing. All these are just different ways. Uh, we can write uh, the same uh, the same answer. Now, oops, no, exactly. Uh, I think I'm wrong here. Uh, I don't need to draw anything. Plus minus not square root, but uh, just um, because that means square root of one over square root of nine. Yes, that's what it means. And then R will be equal to plus minus square root of one, just one, and square root of nine is uh, three. So R is plus minus three. Okay, but now, if we remember in the equation, it was said that uh, the sum of positive uh, positive terms, it was said somewhere, um, okay, consisting of only positive terms. So to have only positive terms, we cannot have a negative R. Okay, it must has a positive R. Even though the calculation here provides R, uh, uh, plus R equal to plus minus one over three, we are going to take the one that has a positive uh, sign. So R equal to one over three. 
Now that we've got R, it's easy then for us to find A because A was expressed in terms of R. Remember, uh, previously we do we, we defined uh, A in terms of I, it was uh, one plus R, let double check, two over one plus R, let double check the value of, uh, yes, A was equal to two over one plus R, A being, that's then, we can now substitute the value of R, okay, we sub in the value of R, two over one plus R, which is a third, Okay, you can even use the calculator here uh, to solve this. You can do two over, okay, two over one plus uh, a third, and then this is equal to three over two. So therefore, uh, sorry. So therefore, a equal to uh, three over two. Thank you.